Okay, let's go ahead and solve this equation right here. Now, what type of equation is this? Now, I know you could probably see it in the title, but did you really know what type of equation is this? Hopefully, uh, most of you are saying, oh yeah, I know what this is because this right here tells me it's a what? Well, put your answer in the comment section. Of course, you can see the answer in the title, but uh, here is what I don't have in the title of this video is the solution. Now, can you solve this uh, particular equation? If you can, that's impressive. Now, it's probably gonna take a good couple of minutes to do so, so go ahead and pause the video, work on it, and uh, then we'll compare notes here in a second. But I'm gonna solve this, and I'm gonna be explaining things about logarithms. Now, just the simple fact that you're watching this video, I'm assuming uh, you may be a math student. If that is the case, this is excellent, because this tells me you're at like the algebra two or college algebra, or maybe pre-calculus level, or some other math course along those lines. So that's excellent in terms of you know uh, getting to this level, but you have to understand logarithms. There's so many um, important type of math problems that we need to have logarithms to help us out with. And, and logarithms are a pretty big subject. I'm gonna be hitting on a couple of um, big ideas about logarithms in this particular equation. But again, I don't want you to substitute this video as a full lesson uh, on logarithms because you're going to need to know more than what I'm going to be uh, sharing with you in this video. But uh, first, um, let me quickly, quickly introduce myself before we get going here. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from uh, pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school level, high school level, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you excel in those courses. Now, if you're taking any test that has math on it, for example, the GED, HiSET, TASC, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACUPLACER, SAT, ACT, a teacher certification exam, and a course exam, you get the idea. I can help you uh, prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have a very comprehensive homeschool math curriculum and program you might want to check out. And uh, if you don't have any math notes, don't panic. You can use mine. However, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video, but I'm going to tell you right now, uh, you must take great math notes if you expect to excel in mathematics. I've been teaching math for decades. This is the number one factor that I can look at uh, in terms of helping a student to say, let me see your notes. If they gave me this look, notes, I'm not into notes. I'm like, uh, I don't take notes. Well, if that is the case, then it probably tells me you know, that student's going to have a tough time in math. There's just too many moving parts, too many details. Anyways, let's get into this problem. Again, if you want to try uh, to do this on your own, uh, you know, sit back and uh, pause the video for a couple minutes. And uh, let, But let's go ahead and get going here. Okay, so we want to solve a logarithmic equation. That's the whole idea here. And I got some uh, big picture things that we need to think about. So anytime we are dealing with a logarithm, you want to go ahead, and this is what we're talking about an equation. You want to be thinking about an exponential equation. So we want to get this thing out of logarithmic form and into exponential form. Now, if you had an exponential equation, we would use logarithms to solve. So you kind of have to you know, use this as a big picture. So this would be an exponential equation. This is a logarithm, uh, logarithmic equation. So you know, we're starting off with a logarithmic equation, so we want to end up in a uh, uh, exponential equation. But let's just review here some real basic stuff. So when you're looking at a logarithm, you have this little number down here. Let's go ahead and just uh, take a look at our problem. Now here, in this particular problem, we don't have that number, but that number is there. Okay, it is base 10. Okay, so that's the little number that's the base. Okay, so hopefully this is review for a lot of you out there. If you're learning this for the first time, again, this is not going to be um, like a complete full lesson. So I'm kind of assuming you might know a little bit about logarithms. All right, so when we have a logarithm, there's a little number down there, uh, subscript, that is the base. Okay, now if we take that base to a certain exponent like this, take a base to an exponent. So for example, if I have 2 to the 5th, okay, that is what, 32. Okay, so this is the base right there to the little five is the exponent and this a is our answer okay that is the answer so anytime you have a logarithm we could just uh rewrite the logarithm as the exponential function this way so okay that's the base i'm going to put that there this number on this side of the equation is the exponent i'll put that there and then whatever is right here is the answer i'll put that there okay now 
Again, once I have my logarithmic equation, I write this as an exponential equation, and then I'm going to solve this, and that's how we're going to solve this logarithmic equation. But there's a couple of uh, fun twists in this problem, and let's get to it now. Okay, so at this point in the problem, looking at this, I have log. Now, we don't have anything down here, so any, anytime you see LOG, that's the common log. There, there's a base 10 on there, but it's not necessary to uh, write that base 10. It's just implied that it's there. But if you look here, um, let's just go back to my little scribble scratch, because I am trying to get you to understand this big picture concept right here, okay? So if I got my logarithmic equation, notice it's just one log, L-O-G. There's not two logs here, like in this particular problem. See, I have a log here and a log here. So in order for me to write this as an exponential equation, I got to get my expression down to one logarithm just like this, okay? One um, expression with just one logarithm. And here I have two logarithms, okay? So, whoops, I don't want to show you too much of the solution right now. Here I have two logarithms, so I'm going to have to use what? Well, you're going to have to use the property properties of logarithms, okay? And I'm not going to go through all of them, but uh, you need to understand that uh, you could just look this up. And by the way, this is in my notes. If you really want to learn this stuff, I would check out like my Algebra 2 course, College Algebra course, or Pre-Calculus course. I teach all um, the logarithms thoroughly and all those. But anytime you have um, a logarithm separated by addition here, just like this, and the bases are the same right here, this indicates multiplication. In other words, I can condense. That is the word you want to use. Condense this expression right here, okay, and write it as this expression right here. Okay, so this is uh, an illustration of using the properties of logarithms. There's two things you need to know. You need to know how to condense, okay, condense means kind of pull back together and expand, okay, you need to know how to expand and condense logarithmic uh, expressions. So I'm just using those properties to condense this right here, and if you do that, if you're like, okay, I get that, I understand that, then I must go ahead and give you a check mark. Matter of fact, let's give you a little happy face because that's pretty good because that's how this is going to really, you know, um, you know, unlock the solution here. Okay, so at this point, I have my nice binomials, 3x plus 7 times uh, x minus 2. Let's go ahead and multiply them, and we'll get this uh, tri uh, trinomial right here, 3x squared plus x minus 14 is equal to 1. Now, at this point... At this point, I'm good to go, all right, in terms of uh, writing this in as a uh, exponential equation with a base, an exponent, and an answer, because I have one logarithm, one logarithmic expression. Don't let this bother you here. Okay, well, you'll see how I can write this here. We have base 10. So this is the base, this is the answer, and this is the exponent. All right, let's go ahead and put this all together now. Okay, so you can see, now that I've done this, we're going to go ahead and write this. Here's my base, okay? This is my exponent, and this is the answer. Okay, so that's the expression I have. Now, uh, what do I have here? Well, I have an awesome little quadratic equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on this. Now, if you don't know how to solve quadratic equations, then, you know, um, you need to go back and review whatever you need to review. At this level of math, you should be an, uh, an expert on quadratic equations. By the way, I have additional videos on logarithms and quadratic equations, all this stuff on my YouTube channel as well. All right, so the best thing we want to do here is set this quadratic equation equal to zero. I got this 10, so I'll move that over here to this side. And I have 3x squared plus x minus 24 is equal to zero. Now, because I know you know how to factor, all right, Factoring is such an important skill in mathematics at this level. If you can't factor, you're literally are not going to be able to pass uh, an algebra class. Uh, certainly at this level, you won't be able to, you know, continue on. But uh, here, uh, we can factor. And by the way, if you need factoring on this, if you're at this level and you're still struggling with this, don't panic, right? But what you can't, what you have to do is, I'm telling you, if you're struggling uh, how to solve quadratic equations or how to factor, immediately stop. And go back and review this stuff, all right? It'll pay you big-time dividends. All right, so 3x squared plus x minus 24. We can factor uh, into these two binomials, 3x minus 8. x plus 3, of course, this is equal to 0, meaning I can set each factor equal to 0. So 3x uh, minus 8 is equal to 0, and x plus 3 is equal to 0. This is an illustration of something called the zero product property. 
And so when I solve this equation, I get x is equal to 8 thirds. And when I solve this one, I get x is equal to negative 3. Now let's just be clear about this. Here I have a quadratic equation. This is a quadratic equation, and it, it's going to have two solutions, right? Always, quadratic equation always has two solutions, and we found them. X is equal to negative 3, and x is equal to 8 thirds. But if you notice here, I'm only circling this right here. X is equal to 8 thirds. This is the, uh, my solution to what? Well, to my original equation. Let's go back up here. This is the original equation. All right, the original equation is the logarithmic equation. We just solved a um, quadratic equation. So now we have to consider what these solutions mean. Well, in order to uh, understand why this is the only solution, you need to know a little bit more about logarithms, okay? So already in this problem, uh, we talked about how when you have a logarithmic equation, you're gonna to have to go to an exponential equation. You're gonna to have to know about condensing and expanding. And now you're gonna to need to know about just the properties, general characteristics of logarithmic uh, functions, and that is a domain and range. Okay, so you can see here, I have some stuff written down. So the domain, okay, of a logarithmic function is the positive real numbers, okay? Positive real numbers. In other words, when we have a log function here, Okay, it has to, we can't plug in any negative values, right? It's a positive real numbers. The range is uh, the entire real number uh, system. Okay, but the domain, what we can plug in is a positive real numbers. You see this is negative. That's not going to be part of the domain. So uh, x is equal to 8 thirds is why that is the only solution to this equation. Okay, now... If you were able to understand all of this and uh, successfully solve this problem all on your own, then I must give you your happy face for today with a good old 1987 Mohawk, an A+, plus and a 100%. Okay, that's pretty impressive stuff. Matter of fact, if you're in my math class, I might just say, you know what, uh, just take the rest of the year off, send me your work, say, you know, just take the test on your own, tell me what you got on it. Uh, I don't know what you're doing. You might be watching that guy on YouTube. I don't know, but uh, that's good stuff, right? Now, if you uh, didn't know a particular aspect of this problem, my explanation, namely um, the property of logarithms, okay, and, other, and uh, in other words, how to condense and expand or about um, how to factor or solve quadratic equations, follow through on this stuff. So I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. But if this particular video helped you out, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me tremendously. And please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for uh, 10 plus years. Have well over a thousand uh, math videos, basic to advanced math. So I'm posting new material all the time. Again, have a ton of stuff uh, already on my channel that can help you out. But uh, my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.